Welcome back to the broadcast. This is Inside Politics. Uh, let's go to your phone lines now, straight away, and hear what you have to say on our discussions today. Let's uh, begin in the county of Kisi. Speak to Julius Amache. Julius, good afternoon. Uh, good, good afternoon to you. Yes, thank you for calling in. Give us your thoughts today. I wanted to begin with uh, Sulu. Madam Sulu has brought a lot of a lot of solutions to Af East Africa because of her flexible administration. Uh, secondly, I want to talk about Ruto theatrics, Ruto maniacs, Ruto nomics. An issue which we have never had, and I have never seen any country in Africa or in the world whereby the bottom approach is used in administration of a country. Okay. This will meant to be a pipe dream which will draw and bring together the hustle dreamers who, will, who are supposed to support William Ruto in his dream to become president in 2022. So, so are but you confident? Are you, are you, do you think it can work, the bottom up? Is this something you're excited about? It will never work. I will tell you for free. All right. Uh, finally, let me comment about Tell BBI. me why it cannot work. Honestly, as a nation, you put money in big economies where a nation gets province and the province trickle down okay. to small scale industries or factories. But you telling us that you will empower every Kenyan population. Honestly, where you get the money to empower 47 million, that is a lie. Will you empower factories, factories observe a few people, empower companies yes. so that money runs the economy? All right. And let me comment about the BBI bill and the politics which was, which was, was witnessed last week. Yes. From the voting patterns which was witnessed in the parliament, it is true that in Kenya, the only thing which is now a constant is politics of betrayal and the politics of excuses. These guys are supporting William Ruto and his agenda. Honestly, almost all of them supported BBI against the will of the leader. And they said, and they came out and said that politics is local. And what they were saying local is, BBI is acceptable at the ground. And they were saying they will form their own parties. Once they support their, they form their own parties, they will now want a coalition with the UDA at the right time. If UDA will have the agenda in mind. So what I've been saying consistently is politicians are selfish people. They support you when they want you to give them something. And they support their people when they see that politics is almost at the dead end. People have been lying to William Ruto. Come 2022, they will run to where the votes are. And where the votes are is where their heart is. That is my stand. Thank you, Julius, uh, for your call and your thoughts on the show tonight. Today, uh, let's go to Mombasa now and talk to Juma Musro. Juma, how are you, sir? Good afternoon. I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Give us your thoughts today. Yeah, I just wanted to, to talk about the relationship between President Kenyatta and President Samia. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Um, from the way the two presidents spoke, it is clear that there has been, there's been a cold war between the two countries. Um, you realize... You realize how Mugwana highlighted the kind, the kind of Madam Suluhu used as Kenya kuna Uhuru na Tanzania kuna Suluhu. So it shows there has been issues of mistrust between the two countries. The challenge between the two countries is President Kenyatta needs to convert the declarations they made into practice. Kenyans are yearning to see a time when Kenyans are going to live in Tanzania freely and trade without fear. And President Samia needs to convince Tanzanians that Kenyans are our brothers. We need to give them a chance. We need to work with them. Let us give, them a, let us give it a chance, see if they can live up to their promises. So 
there's a long way to go. Considering what we see, we saw this week, you had just a few days after Samia left, Kenyan fishermen were, were arrested by Tanzanians. So that shows we still have a way, long way to go. What, what are your thoughts on the... Uh, thank you for that. What are your thoughts on the BBI? On the BBI? Yes. I have no comment. <laughs> you have no comment? <laughs> you, yeah. All right. All right. I'll respect your, uh, your thoughts. Thanks. Thank you so okay. much. Jumo Musro calling us from... Uh, uh, Mombasa with his thoughts on the Kenya-Tanzania relations. Uh, let's go to Kisumu now and talk to um, Gian Wahome. Uh, Gian, good afternoon. We haven't heard from you in a while. Thank you, thank you, Ben. I was away, I was away. <laughs> great, great to hear from you. Talk to us. Now, Ben, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, let me uh, begin with uh, the BBA debate but yeah. that happened in the National Assembly this Thursday. And the question I want to beg, uh, to ask Kenyans, uh, what happened uh, to the numbers that uh, we were once? Uh, this time we witnessed a press conference outside National Assembly of the troops of the Deputy President. Now, the only thing that I can say here is that uh, the Deputy President uh, uh, perceived uh, troops, mostly outside Rift Valley, is based on a very shallow ground. Because uh, we've been seeing photos of these people trooping to Karen. And what happened in the National Assembly uh, really uh, focused on our politics. It's not based on any principle. It's not based on any uh, ideology. We never expected the likes of Mujiri, eh? the likes of Mujiri to come uh, to Parliament when all along they've been opposing the BBI and suddenly telling the Kenyans that, uh, yes, I support. Ben, uh, 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 I want to confirm that uh, this is uh, a replica of, uh, of what is going to happen in 2022. And uh, if William Ruto is serious about his presidential uh, pursuit in 2022, then he has really to recheck uh, the group surrounding him. Is it surrounding him because of the brown envelopes? That is a question that uh, William Ruto has to ponder and ask himself. Tell me this, there are those who say, yes. there are those who argue that uh, when you break down the, the numbers uh, from Thursday's uh, vote in the National Assembly, if you, yes. if you, it, it, it would seem that it, is, it was William Ruto versus Uhuru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musyoka, Musalia Mudava, De Moses Wetangula, and you break down uh, yes. each and every person with a, so, so to speak, the number of MPs who support them, uh, that yes. uh, as a single politician that Ruto is still alive. Yes. What do you say to that? No, uh, <laughs> this is just one of the gold shifts that, uh, Tanga, uh, that uh, Tanga Tanga has been employing on the ground. This is just one of the excuses. You have to remember, Ben, in this country, you can never make it on your own. Even to the head seat, you can never make it on your own. And that's the greatest blunder that William Ruto has made. The combination of uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga, the likes of Wetangula. He cannot say that uh, he has the numbers because we know in this country, and there is one person in the, in the panel that said uh, that uh, uh, William Ruto managed it as a lone ranger. You cannot make it as a lone ranger. And th if this is the analysis that they are trying uh, to give heading 2022, then I can confirm to you that they, uh, they are officially in the opposition in 2022. Because you cannot make it on your own. The greatest blunder that William Ruto has made is ignore the incumbent and then ignore the tribal leaders that lead these uh, tribes. What, what is your take uh, on the bottom-up economic approach uh, being uh, proposed by Ruto? <laughs> look, at the people pro, uh, look at the people now advising uh, Ruto on this economy. We all know what David D. has been saying about William Ruto all along and what William Ruto has done to the economy. It's so surprising that all of a sudden Ruto has decided to, uh, to distance himself from the vision that him and his brother, Uhuru Kenyatta, gave us. What has happened to the vision that they had then? To all of a sudden, he's giving us an, uh, uh, another set of, re uh, uh, of right. economic revival. Okay. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you, Gian. Thank you, Gian, for your thoughts and uh, your call. Gian Wahama, they are calling us from the county of Kisumu. Let's have one final caller. Uh, that is uh, Dr. Mokiri Wagidindu calling us from the county of Muranga. 
Daktari, how are you? All right. We seem to have lost uh, Dr. Mukiri there. Uh, that's Let's, let's go to Ibrahim Hassan, uh, calling us from Garissa. Ibrahim, how are you? Uh, how are you, my brother? Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm good. I'm very fine. How are you? How is Garissa? I'm very fine. I'm very Ah, Nam. How are you? Yeah, I'm very fine. I'm very fine. I'm very fine. During the voting day, it is not expected that every member was voting based on his party's position. Those who voted for yes, that was their party's position. Those who voted for no, uh, for, for no, that was their party's position. So these MPs who are making noise that uh, they are proposed on account of uh, the DBI is uh, unuseful to the Kenyans, that is nonsense. When it comes to a referendum, we, the citizens, will make a rational decision. They have played their part, but we know that their, de their decision was based on their party's loyalty, and that is their own, and we are not talking about that. So they should say as this announcer of saying that this guy is bad. Let right. our time come and we shall decide. Okay. okay. Uh, let me go to uh, Tanzania uh, and uh, President Tuluhu Hassan. Uh, Tulu, President Tuluhu. Yes. Wakati amesema hapa Kenya, tuko na uhuru wa kufanya kazi na huko Tanzania kuna suluhu ya kuondoa vikwazo vya biashara muri tantalizing statement but uh, now we are, look, we are we are waiting for its implementation all right kwa sababu these politicians you know it, they, they are normally uh, gossip about uh, they, they can say things easily but now when it comes to implementation they go like a total, you know, it becomes very hefty for them to implement what they say. So most of them, mm -hmm. they just make a political uh, statement that has no any impact on the people's lives. So oh. I hope that they will talk the talk and that they will implement that, uh, what they have arrived in that uh, state affair. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Ibrahim Hassan. They are calling us uh, from uh, Garissa. That's why we leave it for the phone lines. Many thanks to all the callers. Uh, for calling in. Let's, let me go to the panelists now for their final thoughts. Um, let me begin with you, uh, Brian. Mm -hmm. Just uh, one minute only. Give us your final thoughts. Uh, ben, what I'll say is this. For the BBI guys, <laughs> they're racing against time, not their perceived opponents. Because uh, if the referendum passes uh, the August mark, the changes will take effect, especially the constituency changes will take effect in 2027. So instead of having perceived opposers of the BBI, they should really work on their time. And you see, they had all the time, and somebody was playing time on them. So between the two principles, one of them do not have, do, uh, does not want a referendum. I don't know who. <laughs> All right. Who is that? <laughs> I don't know who doesn't want a referendum, but the person who had time, but played time, is the person who does not want a referendum. All right. Let me come to you, uh, uh, Javas, for your final thoughts. Uh, ben, when you look at a packet of seeds before you plant, you never can tell which one will germinate and which one will not. And ultimately, the voting in the parliament has also demonstrated the same. In fact, capping it with what perhaps Shakespeare said in the play Macbeth, that there are daggers in the smiles of men. And I'm sure that by way of the crisis meeting the deputy president called after that vote, that he did not anticipate that perhaps some of his erstwhile vanguards of his <laughs> thoughts and politics would actually play the cards that they did in a very surprising manner. With regard to matters Kenya and Tanzania, the president having pronounced himself during his second inauguration and even during this other summit, it is proper then that if actually they mean what they say regarding easing the business uh, function between Kenya and Tanzania and making sure that there is uh, the lifting of visas and work permits, then let Kenya and let Tanzania make sure that there is a policy implication to this that can be made practical and a regulation of the same. Not just Kenya, because there is a question of reciprocity with regard to this matter. And we Kenyans, as right. we move into the, year, the months and weeks ahead, yes. I think it's proper for us to entertain the thought that regarding this constitutional moment that we are in, 
Let us not just look at a question of voting for or against or who is it that we want to appease, but whether we are creating a future that we are looking forward to live in. Dr. Mwana, your final remarks. Thanks, Ben. I think for my concluding remarks, I'll keep it local, I'll stay local. BBI is now a constitutional referendum bill turning into an act soon. Some of us said from the beginning that this BBI was not necessary. Lakini kwa vile mwenye nguvu mpishe, usipompisha, tajipisha mwenyewe kwa nguvu zake. They have had their way and their say at the same time. What is happening in ODM, for example, must serve as a lesson to our citizens that many times when these politicians speak, listen most to what they do not speak, but not what they speak, because many times they mean what they don't speak. We said that a bulk of the recommendations BBI could be done without a referendum and without the cost that is going to take us. All right. But now that it is here, for the citizens, keep your eyes open. We are going to experience huge, huge political realignments in the next few months. In fact, the names that will cross from ODM to the other side and vice versa will shock you. Keep well, fellow Kenyans. Thank you, Dr. Ari. Lawyer and political analyst, Dr. Alutalala Muhwana, and also political strategist, uh, Brian Mbogwa, and political analyst, Ma uh, Javas Begambo. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Always a pleasure you. having you in studio to dissect some of these issues for us. That's why we leave it on Inside Politics this Sunday, the 9th day of May 2021 for all of us. Thank you for watching. I am Ben Kitili. Goodbye for now, and uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and mother figures in this country. Bye for now.